Hi everyone, I'm Rose um, from Rose Maysville Cake Craft and today I'm going to show you how to do this little deer. That cute little deer there. So I'm going to show you how to support it on its four legs and I'm going to show you how to um, obviously model it and make it look realistic and how to um, use cocoa butter to finish it off. So, um, let me, that's it. So let me just get the camera down. Won't be a minute. Okay, so hopefully you can all see that okay. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna show you what I'm using. So it's a Saracino modeling paste. So for the sizes, I'm using 90 grams for the body, 20 grams for the head. Now this will be the front legs and that's 15 grams. Back legs are 22 grams and this little bit is about three grams and that'll be for the tail and the ears. Then I've got another little bit and that'll be for like his nose and eyes. I'll just move those out of the way for a moment. So I'm going to be modelling on this um, green board today that I've already covered and it's, it's set nice and firm. And to get this texture, all I've used is the texture tool and this is made by Kemper. So all I've done is do that on top of the sugar paste and then let it set. Okay, so starting with the body. Just gonna get the paste nice and warm. And then I'm just gonna be creating a general shape. So I will have this one in the picture so you can see it as I go along. I'll just lift the camera slightly. Okay. And then it's, if you've done a model before, it's always good to have that model to refer to when you do it again. So first of all, I'm just thinning out the back end a little bit. And then I'm going to use my dressing tool just to put some shape into it. So I want a little bit of shape here on the top. So just pressing down slightly. And then always smooth over any marks that you make. And then here, this will be where the front legs are. So I just want to shape an area here. So it separates that front, the front legs from the main body. And then just using my thumb, just going to smooth that over so it's nice and smooth. And then I'm just going to do that to the other side. Now I will apologise for any background noise you hear during this um, live because unfortunately it's a really busy time of day here and we're on quite a busy main road and you will hear uh, traffic as it goes past and probably people as they walk past and start talking to each other. Okay, now for the back I'm going to do the same and make that little area which separates the, the stomach from the back legs and again smoothing that out. And repeating on the other side. Okay, so we've got the general shape of the body started there. And if I compare the two, you can see that he's coming along nicely. Right, maybe just do that a little bit more. And then just make sure it's not too flat on the bottom. Do 
Okay, so when it comes to putting fur into the deer, I don't want to go too heavy with it. I just want like some little strands here and there. So I'm just using the Dresden tool and then just popping those in. You just have to watch what direction you go with them. I'll get that a little bit closer, you can see there. So it's just a hint of fur really, it's nothing too heavy. And then that'll just come around the back. This has just gone a little bit um, dirty here, the paste has, because I've been messing with the dust and getting that ready. But you don't need to worry about that because obviously it's going to be painted later. And then just get that fur on all the way around. So I'm not doing too much. I'm going to come back and do a little bit more if I need to. And this is like really gentle, I'm hardly touching it. So I'm just going to leave that like that for now. Okay, so, so looking at the legs now. So these are the separate this into two pieces that should be roughly the same size and then just start rolling a sausage Now because I've got this one here, it's great to just check that it's going to be the right size and from looking at this now, if you can see it, it looks like it's going to be a little bit too big. So the best thing then is just to make sure you've got the right thickness and then just take some off. What I want to do, where it attaches to the body, I want it to be a little bit wider there and a little bit slimmer down in here. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a nice straight cut for now at the bottom and then let's just check that for size again yeah so about there I'm going to cut it there so for size this is about five and a half centimeters and before I do anything else I'll make the other one Let's have a look at that for size. And then I can just cut that one to match that one. I should have two little legs the same size there. Then what I want to do is just create a little bit of a, a knee section. And I'm just rolling over the centre with my little finger. And I'll do the same for this one. Okay, so that's just made the legs a little bit more shapely. And then at the bottom, I want to create these little hooves. So what I'm going to do for that is just roll about probably just a two, three mil from the bottom. Just got to get a little groove there. And then where you've got that groove, you want to do another section above it. So this just gets it started. And then you can just smooth that a little bit with your fingers. And then the hoof, can just be shaped a little bit then. So like that. Okay. 
do the same with this one. Just making sure you can all see what I'm doing. Okay, so if you think it's a little bit too thick at the bottom, you can just thin it out a little bit more. You want it to look quite delicate. Okay, so we've got the two front legs done there. So what I'm going to do to support them is I'm using um, skewers. So sometimes I use lolly sticks. If they're really small models, I might use cocktail sticks. If they're really complicated, then I tend to use wires. Um, but for these, instead of using the lolly sticks, I'm using the skewers because they're that little bit thinner, but they're still just as strong. And when it comes to doing the back legs, we want a little bit more shape, so we don't want too much structure inside there. So I'm just using some water now. So I think that one will be long enough. That's it. So the longer ones, they're for the back legs. Because I've already pre-cut these. I'll tell you the sizes. So the longer ones are almost 8 centimetres. And the shorter ones are... Like they're literally just under 8 centimetres. So there's not really much in there. This piece here that I've got, that's going to be to hold his neck later. So I'm just using a little bit of water on the skewer because this is going to help it stick and stay in place. And then I'm just going to feed that down. So I need to feed it down really carefully so that I don't uh, squash this leg and shorten the length of it. So sometimes uh, you might need to do a tiny little bit of reshaping after you've thread this on. Just making sure I've got the bottom. You can start feeling it as it reaches the bottom. Like I say, if it starts to misshape slightly, just roll it onto the skewer, reshape it, and that should be fine. Okay, and reshape that a little bit. Just check they're looking the same. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that to one side for a moment. And now we're going to look at the back legs. So for the back, I think... What I've done is use the wrong paste. I think I've used what I allocated for the head, for the front legs. That's why there was too much. Let me just check this. Mm. Possibly. Anyway, this is the right one for the back. I'll just split that into two. Again, start rolling it into a sausage, so it's thinner at the bottom and wider at the top, but you do want it more um, thicker, so wider than the front legs, because there's the back legs are a little bit chunkier. So 
So it's more like a carrot shape this time. Just checking that for size and it's not far off. Just trying to get the creases out. It's going a little bit firm. Right, so this time the legs have got a little bit more shape to them. So I'm going to start off by getting the general shape. So about a third of the way up the leg, just roll for a little knee joint there. And then further up, you just want to bring it back like this. So you've got that kind of shape. So this will be for the other side. Now, see this one's a little bit thicker than that one, so I'm just going to roll that off a little bit. I can just shorten it. In fact, I'll cut a little bit off there as well so it's nice and flat on the bottom. Right, so this time, this needs to be quite sharp here, this little bend in the leg. Then I'm still going to do what I did with the front leg and make that little hoof area. So just thinning out the bottom of the leg a little bit, having that little groove there. And then shaping those little hooves. I think we need it a little bit thinner there. Needs to be a bit thinner there as well. I don't know if you can see what I've done here, but I've done it the opposite way. So let's correct that. It needs to be coming this way. Sharp knee there at the back. So that's his two legs started. Now what I'm going to do is use a skewer again. So this time I'm going to feed it from the top. And what I wanted to do is come down at an angle like that through the leg. So if I feed it through the middle here, gently push it down, you can feel it going through. And right out the, to the back end of that hoof there. And then model the leg a little bit more onto the stick. Keeping this, keeping this nice and chunky there, so you've got a nice chunky leg. Okay, let's get this side done. So 
so this has misshaped a little bit doing that that's fine so just shape it back in if you have to get your tool back in there Make sure you've got a nice sharp join there, joint, sorry. Okay. So I think that one's a little bit higher, so let's just alter that. And thin this one out a little bit more. There you go. A little better. So what I want to do now is attach those to the body and I'm going to get the board ready. So I'll start with the back legs. Where I want it to attach to the body, I'm just going to um, soften out the pace a little bit or just, you can cut it off or you can just reshape it slightly. So you just want a little bit of um, a space there so you can join it on. Now if for any reason the, the stick comes through or it doesn't look quite the right shape once it's on, we can do something with that um, in a little while. So I'm just going to add some water to that area. It's going to sit there in a minute. Okay, so all I want to do is press that against the body. And you'll see it started to join. And then let's just do the other side. And then we need to rest it onto a sponge pad so that we can do some more work on it. Now before I rest it, I'm going to start blending in these sections. So I'm just using a bit of water. then just start blending that into the main body. I'm trying to keep this nice rounded shape to form those back legs. I'm just going to press that a little bit more there. Get that nice shape. So if the paste starts going a little bit firm, you can just drag it over with a sharp end if you dressed in tool. I can see I've got a bit of stick pointing out there, so I'm just going to push that back in, smooth over it. Okay, and then just get them in the right kind of shape. And I'm just going to pop a sponge under it for now. I think that's a little bit too tall, so just bear with me.
around a bit there. Right, these sponges are bigger than my usual ones, as you can see. I'm just going to have to um, try and get a slightly different size sponge going on. So from the back, I do need to um, add a little bit more paste here. So I just want to make it a little bit smoother. So I've got a bit of spare paste. I've always got some spare paste on the side just in case I need it. I just want to round out this section. So at the moment you can see a join. I'm going to try and eliminate that join. So just squashing out a piece of paste. Just going to check that's going to be big enough. Might need a bit more. Okay, so I'm just pushing that into place and just just going to make sure I'm happy with it before I carry on. Yeah, that's fine. She looks like he's got a nappy on at the moment until he's all smoothed in. So here I'm just grabbing the paste and just dragging it along so it blends in with what's there. So you don't want to press down too hard on it or anything, you want to drag it into what's already there. And then just smooth it with your fingers. If you find it difficult to smooth the paste together, you can just use a little bit of water on your fingers to help you. Does get a bit sticky with water though. I'll just warn you. So again, just smoothing that together. Bit of water to smooth it in. And then once you've done this and you've got some little bits of fur texture back in there, then it's recommended that you just leave that maybe for a little while to set. But obviously I'm going to have to carry on with it, but I would recommend you do that. See, I'm just sculpting it with my thumb here. I'm getting a really nice join there now. like that. I'll just finish this off and what I'll do is I'll just do this quickly so that we can move on and I can show you 
how to do the rest of it. What I also want to do is just stick, start sticking these hooves down now so that there's less chance of them moving. So just using a bit of water, not too much, and then start sticking them in place. What you can do is you can use edible glue, royal icing, anything else that you think will be better for sticking them down. But just for quickness, I'm just using the water today. Okay, so for those back legs, just want to, sorry, for that back end of the body, just want to get a few more little fur strands in there. And you can spend more time doing this if you want to. So just while I'm waiting for this to set a little bit more, I am going to um, do the little tail as well. So if I just take about a third of this that I've put to one side for the tail. Probably don't even need that much so let's take a bit of that off. And then just roll that into um, a little cone. And you can just tuck that tail out a little bit, flatten this end that you're going to stick to the body. And then just smooth that in a little bit. So this is just really gentle. And that's his little tail done. So let me just move these over. So I might have to leave these here while I'm working. Depends if it um, starts holding. Sometimes it doesn't take long and then other times I have to wait a little while for it. So moving on to the front legs. So these need to go under just here, right under, you see next to the crease that I've already made there. So they just need to go under there. Just gonna make sure there's enough space. And then just add some water to the top of the paste and to the stick. And then just gently feed them under the body like that. If you need to, press it down. Just It might be that these are a bit too long. It, it actually seems okay at the moment. So I'm just going to press it down a bit because I do want to blend the paste in there. So I'll do that before I put the next leg on. So what I'm doing is just grabbing the paste from the leg because that's a little bit softer than the, the body and I'm bringing it up to the body and then blending it in. And then it starts attaching nicely to the body then. And just smooth that a bit more. Okay. 
you can see how that one leg is there now so let's do the other one helps if you just soften this paste as well before you uh, start trying to blend it together a bit of water there I'm getting all nice and sticky now so as I put this in I want to make sure it's going to be in the right place and then I do want them to just go over slightly like that And then I can just start blending that in as well. So it's fiddly modelling, but I do think it's worth it in the end, you know, because Sometimes all you see is models lying down on cakes or maybe if you have cute models they're always sitting so it's nice to see a model standing on all four legs. Okay, so what I can do now actually, because they seem to have held their shape quite well just put a few little fur marks in the front legs as well I'm just gonna do a little bit just to show you I'm not gonna spend too much time doing this you can see you've got like a little bit of detail there let me notice I don't go just straight down I always go out to the side it looks a little bit more natural Okay, so it's all looking fine. So now we need to do the head. So I'm just popping out there over there for a minute. Just gonna give this a nice knee to make it nice and warm. That that's going to be a little bit messy there, so I'll just flatten that down. Okay, so good roll between the hands to make sure there's no creases. So I'm going to start with getting a little bit of a like an egg shape just to start off. So this will sort of form, I think you can see it there. Like that will be the back of the head, this will be the front. Now from here I want to start modelling out a neck. So I'm just teasing out a neck. You see that coming along? And what we want is a nice um, delicate face with delicate features. I just compare the two. That's it. I thin out that neck a little bit more. so it's about the same shape as the original one there so first of all I want to just get a bit more shape in the face so I'm just pressing the tool around underneath just so you've got a bit of a jawline and it's separate from from the neck then I want this area to um, stick out a little bit more than this and I'm just going to shape it around. So I'm shaping it like that. 
and even on top and then smooth that. And just keep modelling it until you're happy with the shape. So I've always got um, like a, a, a picture or something in front of me when I'm making a model for the first time, especially if I've not made it before um, or anything similar. So I've normally got some kind of reference photo. So on this occasion, I'm using the other model as a guide. Oops. Right, so I just want to flatten this area a little bit more. Just keep messing with it until I'm happy. Right, so that's the general shape at the moment. So let's shape the eyes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the area around the eyes. And that you'll see that the eye, the eye socket will sort of pop out a little bit. So if I go like that, so I'm just taking it round in a curve. And the same here. It's looking a bit rough at the moment because it just all needs to be smoothed out. But you can see the start of an eye area coming along there. Hopefully you can see that there. And before I do any more to that, I just need to make sure it's in exactly the same opposite, on the opposite side. And smooth that out. So obviously if they're not quite the same we can adjust them now before we start putting eyes in. And there you go, he looks like he's got his eyes closed at the moment. So I'm just going to tidy up that area a little bit. This is all really gentle movements. I'm not pressing hard at all. Okay. So I think the, this needs just to be reduced a little bit more. So I'll just soften the back of it. And make that area a little bit smaller. And the same for this side. Okay, so now I'm going to put the eyes in. So what I want to do is just flatten the top of the head a little bit more. Have a look at that, yeah. And then just use the dress down, press in. So you're just making a little socket, and what you want to do is pull some of that paste up and out, and then the same for the bottom lid. So you you actually forcing the leads out. Let's just extend that eye a little bit. Okay. And then the same this side. So I'm just right in the middle of that little eye area. I'm just going to keep checking that I'm doing it the same. Pull the lid up. And pull the bottom out. 
can feel the paste getting a little bit warm in my hand, so I'm just hoping that it's not going to misshape too much. Okay. So let's get him some little eyes in. So I've got this dark paste. It's um, it's like a charcoal grey. It's gone quite hard sitting on the side there. What I'm also going to do because we are going to be painting, I'm just going to pop the kettle on because I need to um, soften my cocoa butter. So I need to put some heat underneath it. So just bear with the kettle noise for a minute. So just checking these eyes for size. Now I'll open the eyes a little bit more so I can get quite a nice size eyeball. Just that one to go in there. And pop that in like that. And then what I'm gonna do is just Bring a little bit of that eyelid down over it and shape around the eye. And then the same the other side. So you're just shaping the eyelid around the eyeball. Now sometimes this works lovely and sometimes it doesn't quite um, do what you want it to do so then you end up having to put eyelids on which we'll decide that in a minute if we need to do that right so so just in preparation for the um, cocoa butter in a minute all I'm doing is putting hot water into a jug boiling water so just in a jug like that and then I'm sure many of you have worked with cocoa butter before, um, but I already mixed up the colours earlier and now that it's gone cold, it's gone solid. So just pop it on top of the jug of water and then that will start to uh, dissolve. And we'll have a nice paint in a moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop that oil in. Just make that oily around. Do I check that looks right? Then let's make a tiny little nose. So just a little ball of that paste. It's even smaller than one of the eyes. Just get the black off my hands a minute. And before I do that, I'm just going to make a little mouth. So I'm just pressing on the front. And then it's like an upside down Y. So you've got the stick going up and the, these two little marks coming off it. And then you just want to Soften them round a little bit. And now these little nose can go on the top of that line. So it's directly above that little line. So 
So like that and then just press it down a little bit. Okay, so I'm just checking those always look the same. And put a bit more shape around them. Okay, so now I'm going to get him his head on the body. So I've got this little stick. What I want to do is feed some of it in. So you can see I've messed with the um, paint palette now. It's already started to miss colour. Get some water on there, otherwise it won't stick very well. And then that just needs to come into the body. So I might just force a little space for it. So I've got another piece of um, skewer here. So I'm just going to make a space for it. Just going to pinch the bottom of the neck as well. So it's going to sit a bit flatter against the body. And then lift up his little head. And then blend this join into the body. We don't want that staying like that. Trying to keep that joint nice and smooth. So you know, so I'm using that end just to pull it over a bit and then this end to smooth in. There you go. He's looking nice and cute. Now, if this was to, to start dropping, then just to support next week while it's set in is all you need to do. So I'm just going to put the ears on, so that sort of finishes off all these body sections. So roll in a cone. So my hands have gone really sticky. So it's all sticking to me now. Try that again. So I'm rolling a cone and then flattening it into a teardrop shape. That should be about the right size. Okay, so these need to be a bit more pointed and they also need um, to, to sort of cup like that. So you just use the tool just to put like um, a centre down and then use the other side of the tool, make it cup a little bit so they're not dead flat. And then you can just use your tool, put a few strands in of fur just to um, show that they're furry little ears there. It looks more like a leaf. So as long as it looks like a leaf, 
you're on the right track and that will just sit on his head there let's bring that a bit closer so when you sorry it's sticking to my fingers when you bring this side in you want to pinch it together a little bit so you've got this extra section here and use a bit of water so just here behind the eyes and then sort of push that into the head a little bit there so and then blend it in Now when I'm working on a project um, and it's not um, a demonstration, then I let the head, body, everything uh, sort of set before I start doing these little, adding these little extra pieces on because everything's a bit too soft at the moment. So I'm just going to blend that in at the back a little bit as well. And then do this one. So again, just cupping the ear. Put in a few little fur bits in there, a bit of texture. Bringing this bottom bead together, pinching it together and then attaching to the head and I'm just going to push, go inside the ear, push it to the head a bit more and then start blending that in I can make the ears a little bit more pointy, so just use the tool at the end there. And then blend in at the back. So I'll just do this quite quickly, but you just want to make sure all this looks really nice and neat when you do it. So I'm going to see if this is going to stand up for me or whether it needs a bit more time. Now, it looks like it is. So this is sort of how quick the Savicino paste starts setting and starts holding the shape. As you can see, it's holding it quite nicely. Again, a little bit of water under there because I have moved it. And a little bit of water under the front. So that holds it quite well, but if you want it to be really welded to the cake or to a board or something, you might want to try using the glue or uh, the royal icing. So now for the painting to finish off. So when it comes to the hooves, let me just pop this back on here so you can see the original. When it comes to the hooves, you've just got like a little bit of black at the right at the bottom. Now you can do that with an edible pen if you wanted to, or you can use um, the black cocoa butter. So whatever you um, prefer using. So to make these colours, I've used um, brown and orange in the Savicino colours. So I'll mix them together to get this nice sort of ready brown. And if you're not familiar with the cocoa butter, so it's literally just, uh, it comes in a hard form and you just melt it and you get this nice uh, melted butter. Okay, so 
I'm just going to start with the back and just start painting. So you'll see this is a slightly different colour to this one. Um, as long as it looks right, it doesn't really matter. I've, I can't remember, to be honest, what colour I used last time. It has been probably a couple of years since I did that one. So as long as it's the right kind of colour, then that's what matters. So what you're going to try and do is cover the whole of the back and belly. So this paste, this paint is quite watery at the moment. And so it might be that you end up putting another layer on, maybe thicken it out. I'm quite happy with this. And then work your way down the legs. But because the bottom of the legs are white, you want to sort of make sure you've got the paint on the brush at the top here. And then as you're working down, you just want to uh, make sure there isn't that much paint left on. So it just gradually blends in. And so you don't want to end up with a, some kind of line there separating the two areas. And then the same for here. And also avoid the neck because there's also a white patch on the neck. So don't do the neck straight away. Just go sort of, so you can see it's, it's just naturally getting thinner, the paint is, as you reach the centre of the leg. I'm just going to make sure that there's a little bit under his tummy area. And just getting the inside of his leg there. And then just the bottom part of his, his chest, just underneath the neck and leaving the neck free. I think it's, yeah, it's all round, under his tail, under his bottom. So I'll just do this a little bit quicker, because I think I've been going just over an hour now. And you get the general idea anyway. So, obviously, uh, you take your time with this and you just make sure it's all nice and neat. Right, so for the neck, under his neck, and you, see, you can see from this model, I don't know if you can see from there, it's white all the way under his mouth down to the bottom of his neck. So, we just need to make sure this one's the same. So I'm just lifting his head a little bit. Quite like it when the head's lifted. So I'm just going to try and avoid that neck area. That's it. Carefully, I, sh I should really swap to a thinner brush. In fact, I will. Let's make it easier. And then we can just finish off 
the rest of the head. We just need to avoid the immediate area, area around the eyes and inside the ears. So we need to keep those clear. So just over the top of his head. And then just get in a little bit of a white edge around the eyes, so not getting too close. So I'll go back to the smaller brush. Okay, so for the ears, all you want to do is catch the edges. And then you'll, you'll have noticed that I kept like the tip of his tail white as well. make that colouring a little bit heavier on the head there. It's looking a little bit on the light side. And then just paint around his mouth. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is just add a little bit of black So all I want is a little bit of black again on his ears, just little touches, nothing too heavy. So I've got hardly anything on the brush. And then he's the front of his hooves and the back. And like I said, these are delicate bits and they can be done with just an edible pen. If you prefer that. Okay, so let me just do these ones quickly because you get the idea. I think that back one's gone a little bit thick at the other side. It's misshaped slightly. There you go. And then the only thing left to do is the little spots. So the way I do that is I use a, I use a paintbrush. And then I'm just using some um, cocoa butter on its own. So if you can just bear with me because it's just gone a little bit um, firm. Let's see if this is going to work for me. And you literally just make these little spots by using the clear, clear butter that takes off the colour. This is still a little bit um, hard, the butter is. Come on. And then if that's not bringing the paint off quick enough, you can use a little bit of a sponge and just encourage the paint to come off there.
I'm hoping you can see that effect on the camera. I'll do another couple. So a little bit of clear butter and then the sponge to lift off the butter, which will also bring off the paint. And I've done this method with the um, the alcohol paint. So that's where you mix the dust with alcohol. And it's exactly the same, you just use a bit of clear alcohol or even water to um, lift that paint back off. Right. Okay, so you see the effect there? Right, so let me just put you back on camera. There we go. Right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, here he is, up close. You can see his little um, painted effects. And his cute little face there. Um, so thank you for watching. I'm I'm really pleased you, you joined me today. Thank you to Sarah Chino for inviting me. Um, if you want to see any more of my tu YouTube YouTube tu tutorials, sorry, I think I'm getting a little bit tired now. <laughs> if you want to see any of my work, you can go onto my website or you can look on my YouTube channel, and it's RoseMaysworldCakeCraft.com. So thank you again. See you soon.